Harvard students get ready for musical extravaganza, Westwood Ho, 1921 edition of the Harvard Hasty Pudding Show. Lovely, isn't it? Girls take rest from rigors of rehearsal as Osgood Hooker of Harvard does a fandango worthy of a Corrine from the best of finishing schools. You'd never know he was all American material if it weren't for the pipe. There's a long, long tradition of drag stemming back a thousand years. I guess probably the biggest star ever in drag was Julian Eltinge, and he was enormous. Star, I mean, it's hard even to imagine a female impersonator who had his own Broadway theater named after him. He starred in silent films. Poor Julian Eltinge, though, um, felt so compelled to prove his manhood that there were all sorts of stories that well-publicized fistfights in, in the alley of his theater, where some journalist would have made a disparaging remark, calling him, you know, pink powder puff or something, and, and then he'd you know, get a big fist fight and knock the guy out. I understand Julian was a very small man, made a beautiful woman, and there's the story oh, that the uh, a young boy saw Julian in vaudeville and ran home and said to his mother, I don't want to be an, an explorer. I want to be a female impersonator. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Pierce. Your over the hill valley girl is here. <laughs> I always opened the show as a glamor gal. My theme song was Illusions. The Marlena Dietrich song, want to buy some illusions, slightly used, the second hand. Such romantic illusions, reaching high, built on sand. They have a touch of paradise. In 1954, I began as an impressionist. In other words, I worked in a tuxedo. The tuxedo bit went into black slacks and a black turtleneck sweater. And then one thing led to another, and all of a sudden, there I was in full drag. <laughs> May West, oh, I've always said that sex is a misdemeanor. Yeah, the more you miss, the meaner you get. Sex is like bridge. If you don't have a good partner, you better have a good hand. <laughs> they asked me the other day my definition of a perfect lover. A man who can make love to you until four o'clock in the morning and then turn into a pizza. <laughs> Charles Pierce is a great artist who fought many of the battles that, that I um, reaped the benefits from. He came to New York finally in the 70s. It took him quite a while, and he became a great sensation. He does famous women like Betty Davis, Mae West, and at first, I didn't quite get it when I went to see him. I'd heard so much of this legendary performer because he really doesn't imitate them very well. I'll never forget my films, and I will never let you forget my films. <laughs> but that's not his interest. He's a, he really is a stand-up comedian, and he uses these women Especially as just a starting-off point to do a whole string of jokes. He's almost more fox. Bob Hope. Crawling. <laughs> Crawling up the railroad tracks to Chicago <laughs> with paradinitis. A Greek I picked up in a bar, not that. My career spanned 36 years. I mean, do you realize I've had about 10,000 dresses on this poor, tired old frame? 10,000, not to count the wigs, the shoes. Are you ready for this? Get ready for a quick Evita. I call him Don Juan because after one, he is done. I did the whole thing years and years ago, long before Madonna. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Catherine Hepburn. You know, Spence said to me, Kate, I'm a man and you're a woman. And I was taken back. It was the first time anyone ever confirmed the doctor's report. You know, dear, when you have four Academy Awards, you can do any fucking thing you want. <laughs> Who knows? I'll be back before you know it, folks. I will return your Norma Desmond for all of those fans out there in the dark.